Welcome back to Without Excuse, where we answer the skeptics' questions one question at a time. Today we're going to answer a question made very popular and very pertinent by science and religious circles alike. The question is, couldn't God have used evolution? Many have asked this question in order to harmonize the obvious conflict between the Bible's supernatural creation and the man-made theories of evolution. This has resulted in many compromising theories. One called theistic evolution, in which God is believed to have brought the material universe into existence, but used natural processes like Darwinian evolution in order to bring about the many forms of life we see today. Another is progressive creation, which postulates that God slowly created life forms over millions of years. You will see from science, from scripture, and from just some simple common sense that there is no compromise necessary. And no, God did not and could not have used evolution to bring about the world we see today. First, evolution conflicts with real science. Now I say real science, not historical science, not religious science, but real science, observable science, demonstrable science. Evolution, Darwinian evolution, neo-Darwinian evolution, still has gaping holes and lack of explanation for so many things that it barely warrants being called a viable theory. For one, there is no explanation for the laws of nature we see around us today. Laws like biogenesis that have been shown that life only comes from life. You must believe at some point in spontaneous generation to believe in evolution, even though spontaneous evolution contradicts everything scientific we know today. We see evolution contradict laws like entropy, laws involving information science, which say that information must always come from an intelligent source, and so there must be an intelligent cause behind the universe. There is no mechanism for evolution, though many say, well, it's mutation with natural selection, but that doesn't really answer the question. It just shifts the burden of proof behind jargon and technical terms. Where are the intermediary forms that Darwin said would be the most obvious and gravest objection against my theory? Sure, we see uh, bones in the dirt like Lucy or spurious, you know, bird creatures like Archaeopteryx, but that hardly warrants for the great chain of missing links we should see if we've all followed this common ancestor. And finally, and maybe most importantly, where is the observation? Yes, we see microevolution taking place. We see variations within a kind to confirm exactly what the Genesis, Genesis account says. But where is the observable macroevolution from kind to kind that Darwin and his theory demands must happen? So evolution does not make sense and conflicts greatly with real science. Furthermore, evolution contradicts the Bible, God's words. God said in the book of Isaiah that he spreadeth abroad the earth, abroad the earth by myself. He stretcheth forth the heavens alone. God didn't need to use evolution or natural processes in order to bring us here. He's God. He said he created all things by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, we know in the book of John, the first chapter, is the word. You see, very simply, God said in Genesis 1, and there was. He said, let there be, and it was so. God created us by the supernatural act of his own word. That is the powerful God of the Bible. That is the supernatural creation that the Holy Scriptures support and speak of time and time again. Why compromise with a man-made theory and one that is poor scientifically at that? And lastly, and maybe most importantly, evolution cheapens the character of God. To believe that God Almighty, the one we would rest our eternal salvation on, the one we would believe gave us his word, to believe that God Almighty would use millions of years of death and destruction, millions of years of cancer and mutation, millions of years of mistakes and misfits in order to bring us to pass, well, frankly, that's not the kind of God I want to serve, and that's the, not the God I know and love. God Almighty said of this earth and his, his creation that he created it not in vain. He didn't create mistakes. He didn't create misfits. Now, yes, sin and death has come into the world, and we see death as a result of sin, but death was not the means that God would ever use in order to bring us to pass. That is a complete contradiction, a cheapening of the character of God, of his goodness, of his explicit word, and his character. 
You might object. You may say, though, but evolution is an accepted scientific theory. Shouldn't we look for ways to harmonize the Bible and evolution so that others will come to the faith? But as much as an organization like BioLogos might do that, majority does not rule. Appealing to the general consensus of something doesn't make it true. That's a logical fallacy. And furthermore, who are these scientists that all accept this theory? Those who are characterized in that group of accepted scientists are usually the ones that only accept evolution to be true. You'd have to exclude men like, you know, uh, men like Kepler and Galileo, men like Newton and the like. There are scores of scientists, old and current, that do not agree with evolution. So that does not hold any water. You may object further. You may say, but there are evolutionists who believe in God. Well, I know Ken Miller and organizations like BioLogos or preachers and you know teachers like Hugh Ross may have the best of intentions, but I could just as easily say there are evolutionists who don't believe in God. So an argument like that leaves us at a standstill. Appealing to authorities does not determine truth. That is another logical fallacy. The truth of the scripture the truth of science is that God made everything very good in his creative act in Genesis 1. And a very real Adam and a very real Eve disobeyed God Almighty and as a result brought sin and death into this world. That's why we see the curse. That's why we see cemeteries. That's why we see hospitals. Because by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men. But praise be to God that Jesus Christ, the last Adam, stepped into his creation as a man, lived a perfect and sinless life, and then died for our sins. Why? Because God sees death as an enemy, not as a means to bring about life. And by dying on that cross and taking death upon himself and tasting death for every man, Jesus Christ offers you and I life, and life more abundantly, eternal life. I would implore you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, did not need to use evolution. No, Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, hates death and decided to take death upon himself so that one day he can destroy death completely. And the Bible says one day death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. But sadly, those who do not have their names written in the book of life will also be cast into the lake of fire. So I trust and I pray that the word of God will find good soil in your heart. You'll consider the claims of scripture. You'll consider them in the light of real science. And you'll consider the true character of God Almighty. One who could never use evolution. One who promised to do just as he said. And if you still go on in your sin and still cling to things like evolution as a way that we came about in light of the fact that God made it so clear that he did not use such a thing, well, my friend, sadly, you will be without excuse.